Like many of you, I never imagined that I would go to prison. But then I did. At the age of 24, I was a committed member of the Australian Army, having served five years in the Airborne Infantry and the wider Defence Force. I had one plan for my life, and I was living it. I never would have imagined that in a matter of hours, that could all change. I never would have imagined that in a matter of months, I'd be on a path to prison and not to leading troops on the battlefield. My path had changed from the one that I had dreamed of from when I was a little boy, and my world and the world of all of those around me was turned upside down. In 2011, I experienced one of the highlights of my career, parading before Queen Elizabeth. From the outside, things had never looked better, but internally, I was tearing myself apart, and with the power of hindsight today, I wish that I had reached out for help. One day, no longer wanting to deal with my internal conflict, I made a series of decisions that would forever change the course of my life and would ultimately bring me here to you today with the understanding that our country's prison system and many like it around the globe are fundamentally broken. I want you to join me imagining what a world where prisons worked looked like. Imagine the lives that would be saved. Imagine the lives that would be changed. Imagine the harm that would be prevented. Imagine the money that would be saved. Each year in Australia, we spend approximately $4 billion on prisons. We're in the top five countries across the globe for expenditure per prisoner, spending on average $110,000 per prisoner per year. Yet in spite of all of this spending, over the past decade, reoffending rates have increased and incarceration rates have skyrocketed 39%. When we compare ourselves to other countries who spend similar amounts per prisoner, like Norway, Denmark and Iceland, we perform considerably worse, with reoffending rates nearly double these countries and incarceration rates up to four and a half times these countries. So where have we gone wrong with our prison system? In Australia, sentences are getting longer and longer. The corral of society is to lock them up and throw away the key. This is pushing our system to breaking point. Cells designed to house one often sleep two or even three with someone on the floor. We've succeeded in creating a prisoner warehousing scheme rather than a system designed to rehabilitate and release offenders back to the community whom are of value. The cold truth is that longer sentences are beneficial to no one and only more damaging to society. The fact is that 95% of prisoners will be released in your lifetime. And all that longer sentences serve to do is to defer problems from your generation to your children's. Longer sentences are more damaging. A prisoner is six times more likely to die than someone who has not been to prison. Tragically, the damage does not stop there, and the children of prisoners are up to six times more likely to go to prison in their lifetime. We have succeeded in creating a generational prison system, not a prison solution. It horrifies me in Australia that we have outrageous reoffending rates. Between 40 and 70% of prisoners will have reoffended and returned to prison within three years. If you have not completed high school, this range narrows, starting at 60%. We know there are countries in the world that have achieved rates as low as 17%. We can and we must do better. But perhaps the biggest failing of the Australian prison system is that in 2018, over 60% of the prisoners being released are not able to read, write or do maths on a functional level. How can these people survive in the 21st century? As a nation, we should be ashamed. But it's not only the system 
or the prisoners that is flawed. As a community, we need to learn to accept that having been to prison does not diminish a person's value or their potential worth to society. My views used to be so black and white until I experienced firsthand how hard it is for someone re-entering the community. You are treated as scum, no longer a person of good character. You become a second-class citizen when all you want to do is contribute, belong and fit in like anyone else. During and on my release, I applied for over 1,000 jobs, attending over 50 interviews to be pipped at the post every time. It is one of the hardest experiences of my life. Sadly, for many former prisoners, getting a job is not the end of the employment struggle, as I learned in the lead up to this event, when someone attempted to use my past to further their personal agenda, attacking the reputation of the company that I work for and attempting to have me fired. They did not succeed, but it left me with a bitter taste in my mouth and led me to ask the question, what role do we as a society play in someone's reoffending when we refuse to allow them to move on from their past and build a future where they can be of value to the community? Albert Einstein defined insanity as doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Our prison system remains largely unchanged for the past 100 years, yet we expect a different result. It is time that we tried a different approach. It is time that we found a way that works. It is prison where I learned how hopeless the system is. It is prison where I learned that it is built for you to fail. It is prison where I witnessed the best and the very worst in people. I witnessed a young man, happy and hopeful, released from prison on Friday, only to return Sunday, broken and lost. I witnessed a young man, whom when asked what he wanted to be when he grew up, respond with, I don't know. My parents had me robbing shops since I was seven. And tragically, it is where I witnessed more mental illness than ever before. Prison is a place of danger. And there is no doubt in my mind that it has its place in society and that for some people, it is the only option. But when it is failing on such a grand scale, I have to ask, why are we not asking, is the system fit for purpose? Can we do better? I say that we must do better. It is not about the prisoners or the crimes that they committed, but it's about the future of society and the world that we envision for our children. On my release, I started to research the prison systems of the world that come close to working. And what I discovered was that for these systems, a key focus is education. I can attest to the effectiveness of education in prisons. You see, within six months of arriving in prison, I had completed all the educational programs that were on offer. And despite the best efforts of the education support staff, there was nothing more that could be delivered. We live in a digital age where education and the world has gone online, where without access to digital resources, further education in prison has become next to impossible. Eventually, thanks to the support of the University of Southern Queensland, I was able to start studying. They had created the Making the Connection program, a program designed to give prisoners equal access to education a program designed to empower prisoners as students to build a future for themselves where they can be of value to society. I started to study a double degree in mechanical engineering, business, management and leadership. I was able to combine two areas that I'm passionate about and interested in, and utilising the best skills of my past and combining them with my unknown potential to forge a future for myself. The benefits of education in prison are well documented. A prisoner who has studied is 13% more likely to gain employment on release. Yes, it is hard, but I would say to anyone that is struggling, do not give up. You will succeed. Eventually, with my new skills, I found an employer that was willing to give me a go. They were willing to support me and mentor me with my studies and other issues. But most importantly, they provide me with the future that doesn't involve prison. Education creates safer prisons. 
Staff and guards in American prisons have identified that education programs create positive inmate behaviours and report significant reductions in violence between inmates and towards guards and staff. But perhaps the most amazing statistic about education is that it can reduce reoffending by up to 43%. If this statistic alone is not enough to trigger widespread rollouts of further education in prisons, then I don't know what is. For me, when I imagine a world where prisons work, what do I see? I see massive savings. For every dollar invested in prison education, the return is four to five. In Australia, the savings could add up to a billion dollars annually. Imagine what we could do with all that money. We could house the homeless feed the starving, or provide better education for all children. I see a world where crime decreases, where lives are saved, and where pain and suffering is spared. But most importantly, I see the comfort as a society that we can draw in knowing that when we send someone to prison, we know that the chances that they will re-offend on their release are lower than when they went in, and that they will be of value to the community and not a stain on its past. I never could have imagined that I would go to prison. But then I did, and it became my revelation. And the journey has brought me to you today. I was determined to make the most of my time in prison. I was determined for my life not to involve the revolving door of prison. I was determined to show my children that you are not defined by one moment in your life and that no matter what happens, you must get up, you must move forward and you must find a way to make the right decision next. As a society, it is time that we demanded a prison system that is fit for purpose, a system that returns offenders to the community as valued community members, not statistics on the fast track back to prison or death. I believe in a world where prisons work, where education is the heart of our prison system, where the community accepts that having been to prison does not diminish a person's value or their worth to society, where going to prison doesn't increase the chances of your death and doesn't increase the chances that your children will go to prison, and where when you are released, the chances that you will re-offend are lower than when you went in. Education was my key to a world where prisons worked. What will be yours?